Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves, episode number 40, number 40, and the last video I think I'm making for this gameplay and tutorial series. So let's just briefly look at some of the changes that have happened. Um, as you can see, we've updated to version 1.26. Um, I was checking out different designs, so um, I'll go ahead and show you this. Uh, it is humbling for me, but I didn't know all the differences, so I made this Nevada. This is a modified version of our current, uh, of the Nevada, which you've seen me design. So I think I, what did I do differently? I don't even remember. Or maybe it's, maybe it's very similar, actually. Um... Oh, no, no, I think I increased the deck and the turret top. I don't remember exactly, or I, I increased the belt. You know, I can't exactly remember what the difference is between this one and the one that I designed on camera, but basically I've made this. This is the Vada. I even have a few of these buildings, so um, we can see, well, there's lots to talk about. We've progressed all the way to 1929 since the last fight, which, if I'm not mistaken, happened early 1926, maybe even late 1925. No, I think it was... Uh, actually, September 1926. I'm trying to remember because I've had to designate it as a, a memorable battle, so I should remember. Well, um, anyways, so let's talk about some of the changes in the newest version. A lot of good stuff. First of all, this is wonderful. Now you can see that you have ships selected. But um, I was talking about designs, and I opened this Nevada. Oops, there's the Nevada. And then I um, wanted to say how speeds impact different ships but I made the exact same thing this is actually a version I made in um, the old version and we built so if I open my design actually I guess I should do that if I open the design of the ones that are building they should be exactly that <clears throat> so there it is it's the 62 and all that so we can double click and bring up just the basic stuff um, I did build this constellation class, which is my stealth one. Remember, I forgot to do the uh, superstructure for that one, but that's fine. Uh, very low belt armor. This is the one we're going to have to keep at distance, and we actually have one in service now. So you'll see that we're down to just two dreadnoughts. We actually have, I think this is a mistake. Did we lose two more or something? I forget. <laughs> I thought I had four dreadnoughts, but are they? Uh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, when's the last battle that we fought? I can't remember because there's been three years that I've done off camera. <laughs> this is the long and short of it. Uh, let me go ahead and fix this now, so you don't keep thinking you have to close the window. <laughs> um, okay, so move that back up. And the point I was trying to get to is, yeah, I designed the same exact ship in version 1.26. And there's absolutely no changes for it. It's exactly the same ship. So um, that's good. But I was trying to, I knew that there was some design changes, like the higher speed you go, it's supposed to take off a little bit more. Um, the machinery is supposed to be a little more costly in terms of weight. So I was able to go back. And this is, if you don't mind me being so crude as to open paint. Uh, here's paint, which is showing us that in the version 1.26, I opened up our original Columbia, or Olympia, which is the original one we had. It's this. And you can see that although our original Olympia, which I think we still have an original Olympia, 6,000, there it is. Um, this is all central firing now, and you know stuff has changed. We've gotten machinery upgrades, so the turrets got better. But you can see the original 2.5, 1.5, 5.5. That stuff cannot change due to refits, and you can see that that is exactly what we have here. Um, the important thing to look at, if I'm using this, I might as well just show you, is this down here. So if I was to build this ship with this speed um, in a new game, this is a brand new game, just like the Olympia was built with in our game. So in version 1.26, that you'd be over 300 tons overweight. So basically, they're just trying to penalize higher speeds a little bit, uh, make it more expensive for bigger ships to go faster and this does scale with the displacement that's my understanding is the larger your displacement the harder it is to get a ship to go higher speeds which already was the case i'm sure but now it's um slightly harder so hmm. and there's um plenty of reasons for that i'm sure like there's some 
Um, in choppy waters, uh, bigger ships slow down a little bit less than smaller ships. Um, anyway, th there's a lot of realism stuff that's built into the model. So, Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move that away now because we don't need it. And what am I going to do on this episode? Well, first thing I need to do is catch you up on what happened in the last battle. So we'll bring up another <laughs> prop window. I didn't actually get to show you the details, but I wanted to go through this because this is our victory in the last battle, which, like I said, this happened in 1926. We ended up sinking the Invincible and killing the Renown, the Magnificent, which were both Renown class, I think, and their destroyers. If you remember that battle, it was, well, for you, it was the most recent video you've seen. So I didn't go into the detail, I just closed out because um, well, it was a, I was in a bit of a hurry to end that video. And on top of that, I forgot to open this, just slipped my mind. So here it is, the how the points were distributed. If you remember the battle, we won it 363 to 51 in thousands. So this is how the breakdown worked. And you can see that the Invincible class actually has double the amount of damage points, like points that the ship is worth, compared to the Magnificent class. And what I'm just trying to say here is, if you remember my um, original battleships had a point value of, I think it was around 30,000, that there's a super nonlinear scaling, some very nonlinear mechanics involved in how the damage points work. So another thing I want to point out is, although, I mean, it's probably obvious that my two slightly stronger dreadnoughts um, against two of their slightly weaker dreadnoughts, and they're invincible, which I would say is on par with our... Um, Dreadnoughts. It makes sense that they were, it was a pretty even fight. They were actually favored in the original points. So this is the original points that the ship began the battle with. And one thing I don't understand, but I'm just going to show it to you, so you can try to make sense of it if you'd like, is although we won the battle and we sunk all of their ships, we didn't end up doing the total amount of original points that they had in damage, which begs the question, what where was the extra 40,000 points that I didn't get because I sank all their ships? <laughs> um, it's a mystery. But maybe I didn't completely get all the points off the Invincible. Like it was already starting to sink, but I hadn't completely destroyed the structure or something. I don't know. Um, that's just my guess is maybe we could have sunk it a little more, hit it a few more times with torpedoes or something. But um, just to show you that it was an even fight and this is how the point breakdown works. Oh, one final thing is, one of these um, British destroyers, I have highlighted Great Britain in red if you haven't already been aware of that. One of them actually captured some survivors, and it's interesting to note that there was no, I double checked, there was no survivor points awarded. So I guess if you capture survivors, this capturing ship must survive. And that makes sense, of course, but um, just something to note that if you rescue survivors and then sink while doing it, you won't get any bonus for that. Okay, so let's drag that window away, and now we're actually back into the game. So what has happened over the last three years? Very good question. Um, I would say that there's been two significant battles off camera. One where I lost, uh, I mean, I've sunk many of their light cruisers. But the one that I'm talking about is that we most recently sank another one of their dreadnoughts. I think it was a Majestic class. Yes, it was the Camper Down. So this one I just recently sank in a battle where I accidentally sent, it might even still be like this. No, I've moved them back. I accidentally sent, yeah, something's wrong here because I have, I know I'm supposed to have two dreadnoughts more than what is showing here. Oh, they're interned. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, good. So let me go to the almanac and I'll show this. So we have uh, two dreadnoughts that are interned. Okay, so from that fight with the dreadnought that we sank, we took damage. I accidentally sent three of my dreadnoughts in without any light cruisers, without any destroyers, no minesweepers, just no escorts, just sailed three of my, like, basically the majority of my firepower in my navy. I sailed it over to Northern Europe, and they actually engaged some ships. <clears throat> the good news is they, they were successful. We killed a Dreadnought, 
and we sank, I think, another light cruiser. Um, so that was the biggest engagement. Since then, I've also, so much time has passed that I've actually built a constellation. She hasn't seen action yet, as we see there's no stars. The stars just mean how many combats you've been in. So my Kentucky has been in two combats. Um, I wonder if any of my ships here, we have some elite status light cruisers. Is it probably, yeah, look at the Cleveland. Oh, you know, the one, the Tacoma has been in just a crap ton of battles. <laughs> the Tacoma, Tacoma has been in so many of those surprise, like the battles where you're forced to auto resolve or um, fight the battle where it's just um, the light cruiser coming on against another. Um, she's fought against several light cruisers and sank them. Let a few light cruisers go because they're faster since she's a bit old. And um, on top of that, she's also sank a few AMCs, the armored merchant um, ships. Gosh, I really need to... I'm not ever elo um, saying exactly what AMC stands for because I don't remember. I. It's like something I learned a long time ago and I can never... Armored merchant cruiser? Something. I don't remember. Okay, so a lot of ships are out of date, but basically what I'm trying to say is uh, a lot has happened and uh, a lot of battles have been fought. On the map, some important changes. We have, since the beginning of this war, captured Newfoundland, Bermuda, the Bahamas I think too. Ground Bahama maybe was the one I captured. Okay, we own both of those, so it must have been Grand Bahama. Yeah, that one we already owned. So they're down to only Trinidad and Jamaica as their holdings. We currently, I think, are in the process of invading British Columbia. And I think we've also taken Hong Kong, or we've in invaded it. We haven't taken it yet. So we've just done a lot, a lot of work in uh, around the map. Conquered two of their colonies. Three of them, I guess. Three of them. And uh, that's, I don't know, very significant. Another thing I want to mention is that I have been given the pop-up screen which asks if I want to support the army. There's an, a screen that says only the Navy can win this war, which increases our budget. Or it says the army had better produce results, but we'll give them the budget. And I've done that siding with the army four times. The first three times I did this, and this is hilarious to me, resulted in the enemy... Great Britain gaining a thousand victory points because of a massive offensive with devastating casualties for the Americans. So I was really starting to question whether it's worth it to do that or not. I thought that it, you know, it would make the offenses like the, the invasions and stuff go well. But unfortunately, that was not the case the first three times. Now, the fourth time something happened and I gained 1500 victory points. So just to let you know that. Okay, but anyways, this is um, us. I think we'll finally be able to bring this um, t thing to a close. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to also mention, I hope we don't have any battles we can't skip here. Yes, yeah, so we're doing decline everything we can. Good. Um, what is it? Oh, yeah, the stuff that I'm building. So I did a, I was able to get that. I, I did mention this, but I was able to get the constellation out. She hasn't seen any action. She's currently only in fair crew quality. I don't know how to get her crew quality up better, but that's her 10 gun allotment, her stealth lack of superstructure configuration. And I also have, I've had these Montanas were okay, but remember I, w I was thinking about going to the superstructure, I mean the, the super position, um, superimposed. I do think this is better because I have gotten into several fights where having the additional two or three guns, whatever it is, um, would have been very helpful. Now, obviously, the downside is this is a much more expensive ship. You can see the, eventually the maintenance of this ship, if I look at, let's do all designs and sort by type. So the Montana latest iteration has a maintenance of 562. The Nevada, now the 1.26 doesn't matter. They're identical. So this one has a maintenance of 659. Actually, I think that's pretty fair, pretty worth it. Um, it does cost only 17 million more. Yeah, I would say the Nevada is actually um, very worth it in terms of ships. So it, it would be better to have those. Now, one thing the Nevada doesn't have is 17 inch guns. It has 12, 16 inch instead of 10, 17 inch. Now, I still think 16 inches are going to be just blowing ships to pieces. 
And um, with the advanced director firing that we have, um, we shouldn't have any problem hitting them. Unfortunately, those ships are not really going to come into play in this Let's Play tutorial series because we're going to come to a close. In fact, I'm going to, as soon as I can, accept peace with the British so I can just bring the... so I can resign in peace. Um, a lot of stuff is happening. We can see in general I'm winning the Merchant War. We have one, two, so five, six, seven versus two. And it's been that way for a long time. The problem is Britain has such an extensive colonial empire that even if you win it, like I have been winning it about three to one, two to one every turn, even doing that, it doesn't bring Britain to her knees. I don't even know what their unrest level would be at. I have no idea. But it's, you know, it hasn't been playing a huge part. Uh, also, you'll notice my funds are huge, bigger than even when I first began the game. I mean, I don't know, we began and it was 300, I think. It's because for a long time I just was clicking end turn constantly without building. Well, one thing we really need is new cruisers, right? Because my cruisers have just been destroyed. I've lost so many light cruisers in this war. We can see that a lot of these ships are from this war. Um, maybe, if I had to guess, three. The Montpellier was definitely lost this one. Chattanooga was definitely lost in this one, so at least two of those light cruisers are lost during this war, and we need to replace them eventually. Ah, so I see this is the perfect time for the <laughs> leaf blower person to come, but... Okay, well anyways, let's just advance on. I, uh, Oh, so now we've taken Hong Kong. And this is uh, the British new ships, which do scare me immensely. <laughs> this is... Uh, a dreadnought, so it's still going to be moving 26 knots. It's like a battle cruiser. I mean, low, low armor. I, I would okay. I'd be okay if our Nevada class went up against this. I would give us pretty solid odds to defeat them. It's um, just insane. They spent so much of their tonnage on getting this 26 knots. Okay, one, three, four, six, seven, to one. Now I'm just going to keep declining these. Hopefully there's no um, battles that we're forced to fight. I, I just really want to end this war as fast as possible. Anything else I really want to talk about? Okay, so we've seen that now we've taken Hong Kong. It's now in our control. So the army is really doing its job. Now, in order to create the opportunity to invade, you just have to have a battleship, or I think you can even do it without a battleship, but you have to have forced supremacy. Um, I'm not sure about that. The way I have always gotten colonies invaded is by putting a battleship there, which is kind of the reason why it's nice to have these legacy battleships, um, the Delaware, Michigan, New Jersey, because I've just stationed them in Southeast Asia and also in the West Coast, and they've invaded the colonies there just because of their presence. So even though they're not dreadnoughts, they're not updated, they're probably even obsolete at this point. Oh, no, they're still not obsolete. I mean, I'm getting a lot of obsolete ships because it's been so long this war has dragged on for so long. But uh, all that just saying that you can encourage invasions by putting battleships. Now, in the newest version, in this current version, building forts actually helps prevent land invasions. So there's a lot more reasons. I think they've also decreased the cost of coastal batteries by a significant amount. So I haven't done it in this play, but it's actually now kind of worth it to build coastal defenses. Good, so that was a good turn, as in we didn't have to decline any battles, and they didn't um, engage us. Uh, I, I don't even remember what ships Great Britain has left. So they are building four ships right now, but currently intact, their ships, they have just two dreadnoughts. <laughs> so we've really brought them to their knees. If you remember at the start of this war, I think they had eight dreadnoughts and three battle cruisers. And we've eliminated six dreadnoughts and three battle cruisers. Um, very, very impressive. So, at this point, we're not really researching any more technology as well. Um, I'm not sure. We certainly could still gain some naval gun technology. Like, we could get quality 1, 11, 15, and 18 inch guns. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way you can get quality 2. I think I've seen quality 2 before, but I'm not sure. Uh, However, I'm, 
we haven't gotten any quality two yet, and I'm not sure if you can. So we're, we're getting towards the end of the research tree, is what I'm trying to say. And remember, this game is only designed to go to 1925, so that's completely fair. Not at all a complaint. So we can look and see that um, I think machinery, armor, and hull will continue to upgrade. But there's probably stuff like fire control, ship design. I don't think that at after you get to like 19 or so, I doubt that there's any technologies more you can even research. So, um, okay, good. So let's say the Navy can fight on if needed. We've taken a lot of stuff. Uh, so we've made um, advances in fleet tactics, tactics it said there, but what that actually does is probably nothing. Okay, so Galveston is an Olympia. We're probably going to get absolutely wrecked. I don't want to fight the battle, so I'll just let them sink us. Oh, okay, well... She escaped. That's fine. So we were fighting in Nova Scotia. Obviously, we've invaded that colony as well. A lot of invasions. Now, this is only a cruiser action. Otherwise, I would consider doing it so we can see any if there's any... I don't think there's any combat differences in version 1.26, but we'll decline. I just really want the war to end as fast as possible. We have a massive victory point. To, um, like We're way ahead, was what I'm trying to say. So, um, before I bring this to a close, I want to resign, but I want to... Okay, we're taking possession of Nova Scotia now. This is incredible. Oh, good. We're actually causing hardships to Great Britain. So, Nova Scotia is now ours. We've already taken Newfoundland, and we've already taken Bermuda. So, all that's left is New Brunswick, which, I mean, I don't care about taking. I'm taking all these possessions, and it's not, it's not necessary. I guess one thing we could do to encourage the war to end a little bit faster is, and I see that we do have one raider, which, okay, he's in the Southeast Asia though, so we'll just leave him, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna try to set some more ships, just very briefly set some more ships to um, raiding. We can set maybe a Tacoma to raid. And, um, come on, sir, by, oh, let's just do it by location then. Um, wow. Oh, actually, I think I will sort by type because we only have three light cruisers in existence right now. <laughs> and that, yeah, is going to make it really hard to do any kind of, uh, any kind. Oh, no, we sorted by, no, this is only in the East Coast. I want to sort by type. There we go. So we currently have 17 light cruisers, but let's see who else we can set to raiding. We have two raiding on the West Coast. Nobody raiding here. We'll try to set one more there. We have one raiding in Southeast Asia, and we'll get one more raiding in the Caribbean. So set to raider status. Good. Now, just making sure that our tonnage on foreign stations is still fine, and it is. So we have one raider in Southeast Asia, which I'm going to leave them there because we have bases there, so they shouldn't run out of fuel or anything. Okay, good. So just to put a little more pressure, hopefully this causes... Okay, so now we've invaded Trinidad. Things are just really snowballing out of control. <laughs> okay, so this is a battleship engagement. I'll accept. And something weird happened. Doesn't look like we're going into that fight, but that's fine. Okay, so let's... These sounds like a good basis. Ah, finally. <laughs> okay, so we gained four more things. Um... We'll take Trinidad, and we'll take Fiji. Those are two good ones. So we'll take Trinidad and Fiji. Okay, three ships returned from... We got some technologies, reduced dud rate. All right, so we're negative 20 million a turn, but the world is now at peace. And if we go to Almanac, you can see kind of like the concluding stats. Our naval budget at peace is 273 million. We are now the supreme naval leaders in the world. Now you, you could mention that um, Germany has more dreadnoughts than us, but ours are actually, yeah, I guess they do. And they're building two more. So that's, they have a slight naval edge in terms of battle or dreadnoughts, but we definitely have the battle cruiser edge. If you add 75,000 to this, our heavy, heavy ships are still superior to theirs. And I, I really feel like if we went to war with Germany, we would win. 
let's see, like for example, we have 18 light cruisers to their five, we have 33 destroyers to their 12, and um, we have tw wow, 29 minesweepers to their one. One of the things I would do at this point is probably actually start to retire my old ships. I know I've been upgrading them, but for example, the Olympia classes, uh, there's just no good reason why the Olympia class should still be in existence. None of these ships are doing anything good for us anymore. Even the Raleigh and her elite status, I think we would just scrap all of these. So we'll scrap all these. Um, we got 30,000, so nothing for it really. But they're not going to cost us any more maintenance, at least. So that's good. Probably created some tonnage issues for ourselves. That's fine. So we'll just uh, set some people to um, foreign stations. And there we go. Problem solved. Good. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do to actually end this is I'm going to officially resign. So I'll save this. And just off camera real fast, I'm actually going to copy my save game file just in case... I mean, if anybody else wants my save game, that's fine too. I uh, would be more than happy to give it to you. But um, let me just save that real fast. Good. And now I'll resign. Because if you resign, it does close your save game. It, it, it removes your game. So that's it. This brings our series to a close. Let's see. 63 Prestige. We've uh, really brought the United States from a, still already a serious contender to the forefront. We've captured so many colonies all over that the United States did not originally own. We can see that we didn't even own a colony in Northeast Asia, and now we have three. Lao Tong, We Hai Wai, <laughs> We Hei Wei. Something like that. Kamchaka. I mean, look at all these holdings. The Bismarck Archipelago um, from the Germans. Formosa from the Japanese, Hong Kong from the British, Tonkin from the French, really just made a meal out of Southeast Asia. And I suggest if you play as uh, the United States that you should do that. That's one of the strong points. The other place is the Caribbean, which we can see we also took. We were able to take one of these places, I forget, from Japan, right? I don't remember which one, though. The Virgin Islands, was it? No, I don't remember. And we were able to take um, New Providence and Grand Bahama. I think we took both of those from Britain. Trinidad from Britain. So we just really made a meal out of uh, the Caribbean as well. We're the Supreme Kings. We have some great ships, even some better ships on the way. And we could continue playing this, but it's 1930. I feel like it's time to call this tutorial series to a close. I'm sure that anybody watching even beyond episode 15 or so has a pretty full understanding of the game but if you stay with me this long I, I really just want to say thank you thank you for watching um, I had a lot of fun making this and uh, let's see how we finished so Admiral Tortuga we had a few wars um, so this is our prestige I see and these are our famous battles great so we can't really stretch the screen off enough to see oh but that's fine so our first historical battles came against Russia. I guess it's the first time we sank a battleship, right? Maybe we had a battleship engagement before that, but we had some two really minor wars against France and Germany. If I remember correctly, the one, both of these didn't involve any serious engagements. Um, then we had Finland and Western Russia. Ooh, it says major. <laughs> and I don't know what these say because they're off the map, but... Let's see, look at our fleet tonnage over time. So we're in red, and Great Britain should be in light blue. They are. Okay, so we, that's a little strange, the color scheme. I guess they have a lot of people who prefer red and blue. <laughs> but uh, interesting. So we started off, I guess this should be zoomed in by a little bit, right? If nobody got to 50 even, maybe 50 should be the top here. Anyway, um, a lot of people you can't even see on here. Yeah, if they just shifted this down by, t by 10, you know, we could see even where people were at zero. But, okay, so we, we know that the Great Britain starts with the most amount of money. So they did well. 
And at some point over here, I guess in our war against Japan, we actually overcame Japan, but I wonder what happened here. Is this when we... Did we lose a Dreadnought against Japan? I don't remember. I, I don't remember why we had such a severe dip in our tonnage. But then the war with uh, Great Britain came. Obviously, this is the one that we can see Great Britain started with a lot of ships and quickly finished with none. <laughs> so over the course of a year and a half, we sank four of their dreadnoughts and I think uh, one of their battle cruisers, which cut their fleet tonnage almost in half, maybe even more than half. All right, economy. So this is what you'd expect from the United States, but also because of our constant acquiring of colonies. So we were constantly always improving our economy. We even finished above Great Britain. Okay, so what's the total? Well, it's a little unfair because we, we were the only people who fought anybody. So it really should be this top bar against everyone else. But auxiliary, yeah, so I guess this counts for ships lost over the course of the rating that happens on the main strategic screen. Well, good. Well, that's the summary of events during the tenure of Admiral Ortuga. I guess that we close this and... Oh, here we go. We're in the Hall of Fame. So I've played before and we did much better. I, yeah, I closed at 1902. The Navy will name a new aircraft carrier Admiral Tortuga. Well, that's wonderful. Great. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. And um, I'll probably continue the Let's Play series of Rule the Waves with Germany Historical. Um, if you have any comments about what you'd prefer besides that, feel free to leave them. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.